So this is a brief video showcasing the use of a Lenovo Think Center M900 small form factor PC for use in 2023 and onwards. So let's take a look at the front of the case here. Um, this model in particular is shipped without an optical drive, but there is an option to install one, which we'll discuss in a moment. On the front I.O. we have 2x USB 3.0 microphone and headphone input and there is the power button. Uh, on the inside of the case beyond this grill right beside the Think Center logo there is a air intake fan and curiously there is an extra fan um, where you can install a 2.5 inch hard drive or solid state drive which I'll again show you in a little bit. So here on the rear I.O. of the motherboard, we have a serial port, VGA port, two times display port, and one, two, three, four, five, six USB 3.0, an RJ45 gigabit ethernet port, and audio in and out, and a few different options for PCIe slots. And this case is actually a little bit smaller than the Think Centers before it, and I'm not too sure when they shrunk the case or made it a little bit smaller, but this is a nearly a quarter of an inch slimmer than, say, the Lenovo Think Center M93P. All right, so let's take a look at the inside of the case. All right, so the inside of this case is similar in design to many Think Centers around the manufacture date of this model. Um, one exception being the 210 watt power supply here, which is uh, some brand called Hunt Key, which is still 80 plus bronze certified, according to the label at least. And so we're dealing with a little bit of less power, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Here we have the same plastic CPU cooler shroud. Um, inside we have an Intel Core i5-6500 4-core 4-thread CPU, which can be upgraded to an i7-6700 4-core 8-thread CPU, which would be pretty nice and something I plan to do in the future. Um, so over here we have an optional bay for the optical drive, and over here we have the 3.5 inch hard drive bay and also a spot to mount a 2.5 inch hard drive or 2.5 inch solid state drive. So I'm going to lift this up by just pressing this tab in right here. And here you can see that I have a 2.5 inch solid state drive mounted in this blue caddy here. Um, it's a nice little convenient spot and what's kind of a cool feature this time around is we have a small fan uh, cooling everything down so that's why not and of course uh, well I only have a 256 gigabyte solid state drive installed at the moment but of course you could set up secondary storage over here have multiple SSDs and or hard drives. So right over here. This power supply only offers a 10 pin power connection over here. So if you're wanting to say, take this whole system out and put it inside a custom gaming or workstation, you're gonna have to get a 24 pin to a 10 pin adapter if you wanna use a different power supply. and. Um, I can link to a source below. I will be ordering those as well. And beyond the shroud here, we have a four pin CPU power connection, which, uh, so just if you are planning to purchase a different power supply, just make note that you will need that specific connection, which most come with anyway. So this shipped with a single stick of eight gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. Uh, which is curious because the I believe the i5-6500 CPU uh, caps at 2133 megahertz for RAM speeds, but that's all right. So just to demonstrate the performance of um, what you might get 
if you purchase a PC like this either through eBay, um, an, an auction lot like I did, uh, through a refurbished uh, PC shop, etc., you might be stuck with a single stick of RAM. Uh, even if it is at 8 gigabytes, uh, it would be nice to install an additional 8 gigabytes or two 4 gigabyte sticks so you could run dual channel and have a little bit more efficiency. But that's all right. So, other features are a very uh, similar USB 3.0 connection here, which I recognize from the Think Center M93P series. So. I'm guessing that a lot of the features on the motherboard are similar for many generations of Think Centers. Uh, we have four SATA connections here and two SATA power connections right here. That's a little bit hard to see amongst these cables and maybe not the greatest lighting, but uh, so one of these SATA power connections has one SATA power connection and the other one has one SATA power plug and one mini plug for that optical drive I'm guessing. So if you were wanting to say install a third hard drive or solid state drive you could use an adapter like this. Alright so you could use a SATA Y power splitter like this if you wanted to install another drive just because this motherboard will support it. So, we do have three PCIe lanes here, and this top one you can install something like a low profile graphics card like this GeForce GT 1030, uh, which requires no extra power from the power supply. Uh, a Wi Fi adapter like this. This uh, TP Link AC 1200 Wi Fi adapter, you could also install something like that, either in the top, middle, or bottom slot. So, you do have some options. Uh, over here, I did notice that there's... I'm trying to get a better angle. So there is an M.2 slot on this motherboard right here below the last PCIe lane. And I'm guessing that is for a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. I'm not too sure if that supports an M.2 SSD. And it's also missing the mounting hardware right here. You can see it's just an empty hole. However, I do recall uh, somebody on YouTube demonstrating how to install um, a threaded connection here so that is possible of course if you wanted it. So right over here we have our other air intake fan, a little speaker, and all the other features that I won't really get into at the moment that are kind of typical for a lot of small form factor think centers. So now that we have a good idea of the inside of the case. Let's just take a look at some of the general use that you can uh, use a computer like this in 2023, uh, how well it'll perform, and also test out some games. So there are some benefits to using a system like this, um, though the i5-6500 is four core, four thread. Um, you still get lots of really good performance, especially Paired with that solid state drive, and at least I would recommend 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. So, the benefit, of course, is that this CPU does support DDR4 memory, at least up to uh, 2133 megahertz. Uh, so, right now, I'm still just experimenting with the single stick of 8 gigabytes of RAM just because that might be what you get if you get one of these refurbished or if you buy them off an auction lot like I did and if you're just looking to get up and going that you can still expect some pretty decent performance so of course you can multitask still you can use things like Office 365 um, with a good solid state drive you know the responsiveness is quite nice and if you're just doing things like email uh, you know, media, streaming Netflix, watching YouTube videos. Um, you could even, so the movie editing, or not the movie, but the video editing software I use is called, is an older version of Movavi Video Suite. And 
Um, you can definitely use this with a computer like the M900 very easily. Um, once you get into more intensive photo and video editing, you might want to upgrade, of course, but if you're just doing simple stuff like me, then it's really no problem at all. So, yeah, still a solid choice. And now let's get on to some gaming. All right, so I've got my SSD loaded up with Steam games, hanging out right there and connected to the PC over here. And for the best results, I'm just going to record the screen with the camera instead of capturing um, in-game footage because I feel like that would not help the performance at all. Um, and I just want to give like a more of like a live example of what you can expect for gaming on the M900. So we'll start with some Counter-Strike. I now have the resolution set to 1600 by 900 and it's substantially better. We're hovering over 30 frames per second going into 40 frames per second and it is a much smoother gameplay experience. Um, if you're okay playing a window display um, and you really want to play Counter-Strike, you totally can. Uh, we'll mark this off as playable. Alright, so now we have Left 4 Dead 2 loaded up with a full 1080p resolution. Let's see how well this performs. Alright, so I put everything to, let's say, around uh, medium settings. And let's see how well this performs in 1080p. So far, so good. I'm just kind of plowing through here. All right, so overall we're averaging around like 35 to 40 frames per second, uh, which in my opinion makes this game totally playable. I'm sure we could get better performance if we adjusted the resolution a little bit, but the main point is that you can still play this in 1080p and have a good experience. Okay, so I have Tomb Raider 2013 loaded up and I decided to keep the resolution at full screen 1080p and I set all the graphic settings to low to see how this performs. All right, so I decided to play this last level because there's usually a lot going on or there is a lot going on and I wanna see what the performance is like at full screen 1080 and we're averaging uh, right now mid 20s for frames per second. All right, so let's see what combat is like. All right, I'm playing with the controller so my accuracy is a little bit off. Or is something weird about the sensitivity, but uh, either way, it's still demonstrating that it's playable. There's no hiccups. Yes, we're at a low frames per second, but uh, that was actually pretty good. So I think it's safe to say that Tomb Raider 2013 is totally playable on Intel HD 530, and you can definitely get better performance if you lower the resolution. I want to make that clear if you're wanting to game on a budget. All right, so we're gonna test out some Dead by Daylight because maybe you wanna play that. We have the graphics set to low and we have the resolution at 75%. So let's see how this performs windowed. All right, so, so far this is actually running really well. Um, we're averaging about, uh, sitting at about 30 to 35 frames per second.
Okay, so interacting with being chased by the killer, interacting with the other survivors, uh, having everybody on screen, dropping a pallet. Uh, yeah, they didn't really experience a lot of screen stutters or uh, drops in, huge drops in performance. So yeah, we'll definitely call this game playable, as long as you're comfortable playing a windowed like this. But hey, uh, again, we're talking about a budget here, so all good on this front. All right, so I wanted to pull up an, at least one example of an older game that you can 100% play with no issues. And um, this is uh, Star Wars Dark Forces. Still a really good game. Um, yeah, uh, I was going to pull up Half-Life or Team Fortress 2 or something like that. But uh, this one's a little bit easier to just drop in and start playing. So... I decided to use this as an example instead. Funny enough, you might want to even lower the resolution on this to get a less pixelated display, but uh, either way, it's still a great game. And um, yeah, of course you can totally play this. So if you're looking for a multi-purpose computer uh, that's not going to take up a lot of desk space and will function pretty efficiently and fast with the addition of the proper hardware. Uh, the Lenovo ThinkCenter M900, I think, is a good choice. It's not going to be super expensive and you can do all sorts of upgrades like the CPU, graphics card, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth card, and extra hard drives, solid state drives. You can turn this thing into a mini Plex server. You can do probably turn it into a NAS in some capacity, a network network attached storage. Um, just use it as a media streaming device. Use it for light gaming. It's really, in my opinion, a solid middle of the road all in one uh, experience. So hopefully this helped you out and helps you helps guide you in the right direction as for what you can do with this PC and if it's a right fit for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments. You can reach out to my email on the website and ask me anything about this PC and we can go into more detail there. So other than that, thanks a lot for watching and hopefully this gives you an informed choice. All right, have a nice day.